So let's look at a demonstration of static NAT. In this example, I have three routers, router one, router two, and router three. Router one is connected to router two using network 10.110/24. This will represent the inside network. Router two in turn is connected to router three using 8.110/24. This will represent the outside network. Network eight is owned by level three communications. This is one of a range of slash eight public IP addresses. Others include 12 for AT&T, 17 for Apple, and 19 for Ford. So for our demonstration, we'll pretend that this is the internet or outside network. All I've done on these routers is configure IP addresses and a static route on router one. So on router one, show run interface F0 slash zero, you can see the IP address and show IP route shows me that that network is directly connected to fast ethernet 00, zero and router one has a static default route to router two. Router three, however, does not have routing. I've configured an IP address on the fast ethernet interface but show IP route shows us that there is no default route. There are no IP protocols running on this router. It only has this IP address configured on fast ethernet 00. Router two in turn has 10.1.1.2 configured on fast ethernet 00 and 8.1.1.1 1-1-1 configured on fast ethernet 01. It also has no static routes and no routing protocols enabled. All it has is an IP address on this interface and an IP address on this interface. At the moment, router three is not able to ping router one. Notice the pings are timing out. If we use the command debug IP packet and ping that address again, we can see that the traffic is unroutable. Router three doesn't know how to get to 10111. I'll turn the debug off. It can, however, get to 8111. In other words, router two. So router three can ping router two, but is not able to ping router one. On router one, I'll do a debug IP ICMP so we can see when traffic does arrive on that router. So once we do our ping tests, we'll be able to see the output on router one. Show IP NAT translations shows me that on router two, no NAT has been enabled. There are no translations at the moment. So conf t interface f0 slash one IP NAT outside. This is gonna be our outside network on router two you need to tell the router which interfaces are inside and which interfaces are outside. In this example, I'm using GNS3, so it's taking a while to bring up NAT. But there we go. On the inside interface, we need to configure IP NAT inside. And now that we're configuring static NAT, we use the command IP NAT. We have a few options. We can do NAT of inside hosts or NAT of outside hosts. In our example, we want to NAT this IP address, which is an insider or inside host. So I'm going to specify inside. We're going to NAT the source IP address of packets, not the destination. So when traffic gets sent from R1 to R3, the source IP address is going to be NATed and not the destination IP address. We could use a list, a route map, or static. In our example, we want to use static. We want to specify a static local to global mapping. So on Cisco devices, the first IP address that you're going to configure is the actual IP address of a device. So in my example, this is the actual IP address of this host. So I'm specifying that. So I need to specify source. I then have a few options. I can specify the IP address and protocols. In my example, I want to NAT IP address 10.1.1.1, which is the actual IP address of this device. 
all IP traffic is going to be NATed. You can specify that only TCP or UDP traffic is NATed. But in our example, we are specifying that all IP traffic is NATed. More complex examples are not necessary for the CCNA, but I will demonstrate them just to make sure that you understand those options. Here, we are simply doing a one-to-one -one mapping of an IP address. We then need to specify the global IP address or an interface. So in my example, I'm just gonna pick an IP address in this range, 8.1.1. So I'm simply gonna choose 8.1.1.5. That address is not physically configured anywhere. We can specify various options, but I'm simply gonna use carriage return to create the NAT entry. So now when I type show IP NAT translations, we can see that the inside local address, so the physical PC on the inside network, when on the local area network has this IP address, so inside local IP address on the LAN. So logically, we are saying that this is our LAN or local area network, and this is the internet in our example. So global internet. So this host's IP address on the global internet will appear as follows. So on router three, can we ping 10.1.1.1? No, we can't. We can't ping that address at the moment because this device has no route to get to this IP address. However, can it ping 8.1.1.5? Took it a while, but notice the ping started succeeding. And on router one, we see the echo reply from a source of 10.1.1.1 to a destination of 8.1.1.2. Router one is replying using this address. But what does router three actually think it's pinging? So let's do a debug IP ICMP on this side and ping 8.1.1.5 again. Notice it's receiving traffic from 8.1.1.5, but router one is actually sending it from 10.1.1.1. So from router 3's point of view, the destination IP address is 8.1.1.5. That gets translated to 10.1.1.1, hits this router, and it replies with a source IP address of 10.1.1.1. When it hits router two, it's translated to 8.1.1.5, and forwarded to router three. Okay, that concludes this vlog entry. Please let me know if there are any other topics that you'd like discussed as part of the CCNA vlog. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. It means a lot to me if you like the video and especially if you subscribe to my channel. I wish you all the very best.